So I should go without saying, rich people not only live on another planet than us, but a whole other dimension. I say this because a few days ago, I stumbled upon this news about a rich couple that decided to rent out the pyramids in Egypt for their wedding. I'm not against people making their whole dream wedding work. Like, if you got the money, go for it. Just don't be a nuisance. And these guys... <laughs> or something else. Uh, for starters, Egypt was not their first choice. Uh, apparently, according to the groom here, billionaire CEO Ankur Jain, they wanted to get married <laughs> in space, or he wanted to, but the bride, Erica Hammond, did not. Now, Erica Hammond, for those WWE fans, yes, it's it's that. Uh, she She's a wrestler from WWE. Uh, also, the headline for this is kind of weird. Ankur Jain says he first visited Egypt, where he married the for former WWE star as a kid. I, I don't know. Uh, I, it, no one probably checked that. But regardless, it was weird, all right? Uh, I say it was weird because I got to see video footage of it. But before I get to that, it's just the fact that it was a tremendous amount of waste. Like, I'm surprised the Egyptian government allowed this to happen for starters. Like, how can you allow, like, a foreign foreign individuals come into your country and say, yeah, we're, we're just going to rent the Eiffel Tower all for ourselves. Make sure no peasants come into our uh, peripheral view. Let's just get into the video that was recorded by our good man, Ryan, here, because he posted the entire thing on Instagram. And woo a lot of people had a lot to say. Come with me to a billionaire tech CEO's wedding in the middle of Egypt. Who knew you could rent out the pyramids and the Sphinx for your own wedding? You, you can't. If you are a average normal person, you don't do that. Even if you're upper middle class, you can't do that. Apparently, like this is a some sort of secret for some people uh, but if you are filthy degenerate rich you could do anything with that money like buying the pyramids and the sphinx for one night or renting lance bass robin thick mr wonderful from shark tank okay mr wonderful from shark tank um need i remind you the this hodgepodge of people i don't know about lance over there but robin thick mr wonderful these are some Smart people, that's what I would say, especially Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank here because uh, he had some choice words to say about poor people. This is according to Oxfam, of the world's 85 richest people is equal to the three and a half billion poorest people. It's fantastic. And this is a great thing because it inspires everybody, gets the motivation to look up to the 1% and say, I want to become one of those people. I'm going to fight hard to get up to the top. This is fantastic news and of course I applaud it. What can be wrong with this? Really? <laughs> even the news reporter, even the news reporter, like there was no, no amount of professionalism that could be held hearing an answer like that. The news she said and his response, I applaud this lady for the way she responded because really, who says that? Who, who, who says that, yeah, I'm homeless, but I'm gonna look up to these rich people because one day I'm gonna get there somehow, somewhere. It doesn't happen like that, man. It, it really doesn't. And, and these rich people are just tone deaf. It, it comes up again and again. They really have no idea what the average person goes through, especially like during the COVID pandemic when uh, everyone was struggling uh, inside their own homes. Some people whose entire business uh, them paying the rent and bills comes from them going to an actual physical place, retail, restaurant, and to make that money. What do the rich people do? They sit around singing Beatles songs, saying, eh, it's a wonderful world. Like, it was so... I, I despise saying the word, but yeah, it was cringe. That That's cringe the most basic form imaginable. Let me, let, let me just see that. Celebrities sing... I, I could just type cringe celebrity singing. There you go. Imagine there's no heaven. Let's, let's just get back to the video. Lindsay Sterling, that amazing violinist. It was the craziest thing 
ever. Day one after a long flight into Cairo, we were all told to be at Mohammed Ali Palace in Manyal. Most of us had never even been to Egypt, but it was also crazy because the bride and the groom weren't even there yet. They got stuck on safari in South Africa and they got there at about 2 a.m. It was the craziest thing ever. It's just like, if you go into detail about it, reading the article, it's not just, oh, they got delayed in South Africa, you know, rich people stuff. Oh, uh, if you read it, it was the fact that, so they told the magazine here, people, uh, that the flight fiasco was because the couple and their friends were trying to get to Egypt from South Africa, where they were on a safari. Everything was going great. Everything was checked out. But when they got there, they were turned away by the South African government. That is the law. But as you know, poor people are the ones who follow the law, not rich people. They, they, they could bend it to their whims because here they stayed despite weeks of negotiating and planning in order to get approval for an overnight departure. Bribes. You're talking about bribes. That Negotiations, planning, it, it, it's bribes. Uh, I, there's no other way to say it. So anyways, the charter flight they booked ultimately wasn't able to pick the group up in South Africa because of a permit issue. You would think they would be delayed for a day or so, right? They were even planning on taking a, a trip to Dubai and then Cairo in that night. But instead, they gave it some time, meaning they threw extra money, and the, the government came back to them, giving them the permit saying, hey, you guys can go ahead. Ultimately, they said, our flight gonna be delayed, you guys can go home, but the rich people friend said, nah, we're gonna keep this party going for you guys. And they kept going until 2.40 a.m. when these guys actually made it there. This wedding is at the pyramids and at uh, this location where you would think it's in the middle of the desert. It's not. It's, it really is not. Look where it is. This is the pyramid. The average normal person lives here, not too far away from where their party is. If their party was even here, guess what? The noise the music which was loud music will travel here and not just music they had fireworks i'm not saying that the common egyptian person doesn't know what fireworks are the common egyptian person hell even me right now if i were to hear fireworks in the middle of the night 1 a.m 2 a.m i'm gonna freak out that's what's happening most likely to the average person that's living in these areas that noise is going to ricochet all over this place. They had light up dancers. There was gifts everywhere. I actually got a lot of cute gifts for Xena. The food was amazing. The drinks were amazing. Day two, the pyramids and the Sphinx were shut down. And we got to roam around the pyramids, go into the tombs and go see the Sphinx without any other tourist around. Any other tourist around. Basically, you know, the Philistines, the peasants, the poor people. Funny how that all starts with the letter P for some reason. But regardless, it's just the way they word this stuff. It's so I, I've been using it a lot, but it's tone deaf. It really is tone deaf. This is a tourist place, a historical monument that should be open for all people. You're rich. You want to like rent out this crazy venue, crazy mansion, whatever. Go for it. But this is technically a public place uh, or owned by the Egyptian government, what have you, it's open for everyone. Y you take that away. Like imagine you plan this trip to Egypt, right? You spend a lot of money with your family to go see the pyramids, go to see the Sphinx, and it's all, all just, you're not allowed because one rich dude decided, hey, my wedding, my rules, I'm taking this away from people for this one day. Sure, you could delay it, but like, it still feels bad, no? Like, you're, you're nothing. Even when you spend that much money, you're nothing. Then we all got back into our chauffeured cabs, taken to a different hotel to change clothes, and then go to a Met Gala event at the Grand Egyptian Museum, which isn't even open to the public yet. It's the largest museum on planet Earth, and we had the whole thing to ourselves. I'm telling you, I am telling you, rich people have a little bit more rights than the normal person. It's just this museum, this large Egyptian museum, not even open to the public yet, we get to go. There's nothing wrong, like I, want, I just wanna make this clear. If you're rich and you want to do stuff like 
have a extravagant wedding or a party, it's your money, your right, you could do that. But when you become a public nuisance like this, taking away, again, public services, uh, it, it, it's just wrong. Uh, there's there's no other way to say this. It, it's just wrong, and it comes across as very arrogant, which is kind of fitting that they stated stated this in Egypt because um, the pharaohs, not all of them, but most of them, based on history, were kind of uh, filled with hubris. I'm just saying, man. These guys like to play a lot of uh, games with uh, what's happening, right? So maybe Yugi the true Egyptian can play shadow games with them and show them how real Egyptians party, right? <laughs> but regardless, let's get back in it. There were violinists hanging by string. Lindsey Sterling, by the way, that that, that was Lindsey Sterling, by the way. Uh, they already mentioned in the beginning of the video, you'll, you'll hear again, again and again, Lindsey Sterling, because for some reason, um, she's just this prop that needs to be you need to be reminded that, yeah, we bought her. Day three was all about the wedding. We were all told to dress black tie extra. Oh, I forgot, before the wedding, we were all sent a document with designs for outfits. It was a lot of packing. Now, yesterday when we were at the pyramids, I saw this whole building basically being built in the desert. So I took a little video of it. I didn't really know what it was for, and wouldn't you know, the wedding venue. And I thought this was the craziest thing ever, but it was only venue number one of four for the night. They were able to build their own little venue in that area of the pyramids. And that was just one of four, as you could hear. Um, it's just like, uh, there's, there really is no limit at all. Like, just having one venue is tough for the average person. I, I've been to plenty of weddings myself, even rich people weddings, um, not to this extent of rich people where, oh, it's like this, but like I've been to a wedding in like <clears throat> Dubai and it's extravagant. The food's great. Uh, they have like these amazing performances. They really go all out and they have the money for it. That's great. But it's within their own space, within their own venue, within the, like their own mansions and whatnot. That's perfect. <laughs> this is just insane. You taking this historical site and just plopping your venue on top. And okay, yeah, you got the money, just throw it at the government because apparently you could get away with it. There was this whole circular room just of mirrors so everyone could take photos. Lindsey Sterling was playing violin. Again, with the Lindsey Sterling, like, <laughs> it's like some some sort of like exotic thing to this uh, party that, oh, Lindsey Sterling, <laughs> Lindsey Sterling. Like, don't get me wrong, I as a kid, I was hugely obsessed with violinists and whatnot, and Lindsey Sterling was big. Uh, she's still big, but like, she was a YouTuber and whatnot, I watched her. It's just insane seeing her being treated like, oh, this amazing prop that we got. Like, she's a human being, she's just doing a performance, great. Like, it's insane. They, they just leave her in one spot too. Like, always performing. You don't see her like, eating one. Like, I know she's eating and whatnot, but like, you always just see her in one area doing like the performance over and over again like some sort of Chuck E. Cheese animatronic at the restaurant. And then we were told to walk up these amazing stairs onto the circular platform as the sun set over the two pyramids and the Sphinx as Erica and Anker got married. Just saying man, um, I don't, I, I need to refresh my whole uh, biblical stories and whatnot but like those 10 plagues are looking really um preferable right now i'm just saying bring on the locusts bring on the frogs and whatnot that huge ocean that gets split and then collapse upon the pharaoh i would wouldn't mind <laughs> just take me god dang man i uh, it's not like I thought when when I was going into this video, I thought it was going to be a bit more salty. I'm not salty. I'm just just flabbergasted. Flabbergasted is the exact word I'm thinking of. It's just insane. Like, I'm not jealous at all. It's just like my mind can't process what a waste of money this could be. 
And then we went to venue number two for after wedding reception drinks. And that's when we looked at the pyramids and saw that they actually started lighting up. Then we were told it was now time for dinner. And we walked down this whole other pathway to venue number three, which is where we sat for dinner. And in the center of the dinner tables, Lindsey Sterling came out. Lindsay Sterling. Did you know we had Lindsay Sterling? Lindsay Sterling. Lindsay uh, Sterling. Sterling? Lindsay. It just never ends with these people. Like, God dang. It's all about titles. It's all about uh, what backing a name has. Like me? Uh, yeah. uh, Lindsay Sterling? Mm. Like, that's what they use to parade, you know, social media status and whatnot. Like, oh, we got Lindsay Sterling. Then after dinner, we went to venue number four, which was the party. Robin Thicke came on as he gave an amazing surprise performance. Griffin DJed, fireworks were going off. And then right at the end, I became the newest member of NSYNC when I got up on stage and started singing Bye 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 with Lance Bass. Like I told you, right there, those fireworks at night, uh, it's just going to be insane for the people who are trying to sleep because again this isn't too far from the city and as you could see like right here with the venue i think they showed like some buildings that showed like it looked like it was uh near a commercial area yeah that right there you see the venue is built near the commercial area i thought it was going to be like in um the desert part like away like right here it's like right here. That's just, I, I don't know. If I, if I ever become, no, I will become rich. I will become rich and I will do something about it. I will try and change the world. I hope I do because I, I know this is hypothetical if I could get rich or whatnot, but like, God, there, there are people who just are rich and they don't really do anything fun with it. Like at least become Lex Luthor, like some sort of green goblin criminal or something, super villain. So I could at least feel entertained of seeing this person. Yep, that, that guy has money. Or Batman, Iron Man, god dang, be, be something fun. Like you don't have to do good for humanity at this point because you clearly don't care about humanity. But at least do something interesting with that money. Oh my god, like, there's, it's so boring. It is just so boring and unoriginal. I, 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 I'm a certified hater for this. I, I don't care. I will full on hate this. Those are the four days of Anker and Erica's wedding. Literally will go down as one of the most insane things of my entire life. I have no idea what this wedding cost. Probably about like two dollars yeah probably two dollars worth all of this <laughs> a bunch of ious and telling the performers yeah don't worry you're you're getting paid an experience don't worry about that um but all in all yeah i'm a certified hater i'm just gonna end it here <laughs> uh crazy world we live in but if you have money you're allowed to indulge yourself but at the same time i feel like you, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's something I grew up with, Spider-Man and whatnot. It's not just entertainment, these things like comics and whatnot. It's a good lesson. You made it in life. You beat the system. You don't have to work a day in your life anymore. Try and make it easy for others. You can still indulge yourself as well, but like taking away people's opportunity to visit the pyramid and whatnot, having to hear fireworks in the middle of the night for people who had to get up and work in the morning, trying to sleep, that's awful. And then the fact of the matter is these kind of venues, parties, they leave behind huge amounts of messes that will probably get stuck in the sands and whatnot. I say this because places like Coachella and Burning Man festivals, they leave a lot of trash and the workers cannot clean it all it's not just it's not humanly possible so yeah that that's my final few cents about this because sense is the only thing i could afford to give here but yeah that's uh, all there is <laughs>